Hey folks, John from Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in the computer business. Man, I've got one that I have been waiting on, and I know there's a couple of people out there that have been waiting on this one too. This thing should be awesome. Should be. Let's check it out. All right, guys. You're zeroed out, but that just burnt right into that one. So this is, for those who don't know, Stronghold Legend. Time to make a pie. Here we go. What I wanted to do from the first time I opened up that VIC-20 and started banging out programs. All right, guys. So. If you'll recall not too long ago, I did a full video on the Salt Supply Pepper Spray Launcher, and this thing was awesome. Uh, for those of you guys that didn't see it, there's, I'm going to put a link up here in the description for you. L something right out of the Terminator, but very, very, very effective way to keep yourself safe without actually having to carry a firearm. Check this out. So this is the Salt Supply, just to remind you what it looked like, and I will, uh, I'll show Stumpy this thing. So we can get a kind of an idea of what we were talking about. And guys, I, I, I cannot tell you how impressed I was with this. If you go back and watch that video, you'll actually see all the tests that we ran on this. But this is a very large weapon. You guys can see I'm six foot one. So that is a very large weapon in my hand, as Stumpy can see there. Um, I got requests and everybody wanted to see something that was smaller, something more compact, something more concealable. and. Uh, I think I found the perfect company. Now, we went back and forth with this company several times to get them to send me one of these um, because they are so back-ordered. And the reason they're back-ordered is because they're so good. So, let me show you what we've got. This awesome little device, or so they say it is anyway, is the Berna HD Launcher. Now, this is a more compact version of the salt supply but supposedly fires exactly the same rounds at exactly the same velocity, but it's smaller, it's more concealable, and they sent me a holster. And you know, for this one, that was an issue, trying to figure out, you know, how in the world would you holster something that big without having to carry Terminator-style holster on your side there? So let's crack this one open and look at it, guys. I am so excited. This came in last week, and uh, it has been so difficult to not open this to at least take a sneak peek at it. But you guys are worth it so we're gonna see it together all right Ooh, all right right off the bat I see a pretty nice case stump you could check that out now yeah, it looks like it's mostly a case here hold on a second oh look at that Berna live safe I'm gonna refocus stumpy down a little bit here so we can get a good view of that uh, nothing else in the box packing slip and some paper done with that all right, guys, let's check this thing out. So it's got one of these slide out things. Let's pop that. Man, look at that case, guys. Now, I got to tell you, one thing about Salt Supply, these guys, their case actually is plastic. It looks like a gun. It really does. This looks like a really, really nice, uh, it's, it's, it's relatively hard shell, but it's soft. It's vinyl. You can feel that. All right, let's crack it open and see what she looks like. I'm so excited for this. All right, so we got our manual in here, and that is our warranty card. Man, listen to that. That is a serious warranty card, guys. Um, and Oh, it's a member card. So check it out. You actually have a membership card, so you can sign on with these guys. That's pretty cool. And you've got a really nice manual, a really nice manual, that shows you everything from loading to unloading to how to use the weapon, so on and so forth. So that's pretty nice, too. Here we go. Whoa. Guys, check that out. Now, I, look, I, I, I got to show you something. If you look at that, right, what does that look like? This looks very unique. It looks like something that only it is. You can mistake that for a firearm. It's very, very small. So let's take a look at what's in this case here. Now, they give you three different rounds, and if you'll recall, they actually did this with the uh, salt supply also. So you had uh, your inert rounds, which actually had, instead of the pepper spray, they had that uh, almost like a baby powder. It was great for testing. Uh, then they had the solid balls, which didn't stay solid with these things long, guys. When they hit, they exploded, but it put dents, went right through cardboard and foam inside of it, everything. So very impressive. And they've got the pepper spray balls. Now these are actually labeled. You can see that. So these are the Berna Kinetics. 
Let's see what these look like. And uh, the kinetics are going to be just the hard balls. Oh, yeah, guys. Well, listen to that. Listen, if you just listen, they're solid. And they're very, they're light. They're, I can't be more than maybe three grams, give or take. But they're very, very nice. Right, so that's your solid ones you're going to fire for testing. And then we've got our inert rounds. Now, these are the ones that are going to have the, uh, the powder, the baby powder in them. And as you can see, one other thing that they had done on these is they had color-coded the two different balls. So the inert ones that you're going to have are actually going to be these little green and white balls. And they're solid like those, but they're full of like baby powder. So we'll check that one out. And these are the bad boys. These are the ones that are the actual pepper spray balls. And once again, I can see that these are color-coded just like they were over here. Oh, look at that, guys. Okay, that just looks nasty. Red and yellow, pretty cool. All right, so they only give you five of each of these rounds in the starter kit. Um, there is a reason for that. We'll get to that here in just a second. Although there is one kind of interesting, confusing thing about it. They give you five rounds for each one of them, but you actually get two magazines in this, uh, uh, this kit, which is super, super cool, two mags. Um, the only other thing that really bothers me they use these CO2 cartridges that are very, very small. Now, as you guys know, on the salt supply gun, it used a, san a standard old CO2 cartridge you could go down and buy at Walmart, the same one they use in Daisy Air Guns. But these are very small and they're proprietary. Now, I did find a vendor on Amazon that is producing these now, and I will drop a link down in the description down there if you get one of these things so you don't have to buy the proprietary ones. Although they're not really that expensive, it's kind of annoying. So, all right. It looks like you get a little medallion. That's kind of cool. A couple of magazines. Oh, that's kind of neat. It's got a red ball in there to indicate that you are at the end of the rounds, and there's a reason. All right, let's check this out. Whoa, guys, I cannot describe you the weight on that. That actually feels like a pistol. Holy cow. Okay, once again, look at the size difference, guys. I want to give you a size comparison side by side on this thing. It's not even the same. Berna salt supply. So check that out, Stumpy. You can see the physical difference in sizes between the two of these. This is a monster. This is really designed for somebody big. This is designed to be carried and concealed. And you can see the difference. That is wonderful. Wow, okay, impressive, very impressive. All right, so let's go over a couple of the key features on this that I do very much like. Number one, at the top, the salt supply, whenever you would unload a magazine, one thing that would happen is if you had balls that were loaded in here and you unloaded it, inevitably, one of those, just like that, the balls would fall out and you guys just saw it. They go rolling off. That is something I do not like. So you were never able to actually unload this weapon. So once you've got it loaded, if you pop that again, balls are going to fall out. Whereas this one, and I'll show you this, this is actually kind of cool. When the balls go up in here, they're held. The first one goes in and locks in place in the chamber. And let me load one of these up and I'll show you. Now, in order to drop the magazine, it's a standard drop right on the left-hand side. Drop your magazine down. And it's got a little pressure bar right here. Now, one thing you don't want to do is if you get this loaded and hit that pressure bar, all your balls will go firing out of it. So you want to be careful about that. So let's go ahead and let's load up uh, these kinetics here. Now, the next question I know everybody's going to ask, the salt supply held seven rounds. This one holds five. So, press down, load up the balls. Just like that. And as you can see on the side, there is an indicator with how many rounds you actually have in it currently. So now that is currently loaded all the way to full. It holds five rounds, all right? So, when you place the magazine into the weapon, it chambers the first round. You see how this little clip popped up? So if I drop the magazine now, if you look, you've got four rounds still left in here. And this, it's held in. It's not actually dropping out like it did on that one. In order to drop the ball, if you've got one loaded, you simply press this button and out comes the ball. Pretty cool, right? That way it holds it into place. So if you're changing magazines while you're firing it, you can have one in the chamber and then continue to load. Um, that is kind of neat. Now, regardless, you can still only have 
the five balls. That's one thing I did discover on this. So, all right. Now, the next thing. Now, this is something that is a little bit annoying, but I, I mean, given the size of this, I'm willing to let a lot of this go. Uh, your safety and your fire is right here. I do like this over the salt supply because it's on both sides. It's ambidextrous. And the salt supply is the button you have to push through, and that can be a little tough to just push through, whereas this is just a drop and release, which is nice. Um, here's the next part that I, it annoys me. To load the salt supply, if you guys will recall, you simply twist it off the front of the barrel and inserted the cartridge, right? This is the same way, but it's a little more complicated. So, if you look on your magazine, and it comes on all the spares, and I'm going to show Stumpy closely here. You've got what looks like a little Allen key right here, all right? And hopefully Stumpy's getting a view of that. On the front, you will see there is a small Allen key right there. You insert the, the magazine and you twist to unscrew this case. Now, look, it takes more to load this, which in my opinion makes it a little less practical if you are in a situation where you're having to really protect yourself. But... The thing is, is that you'll get more than five rounds out of one of these. I've heard, and we will test, that you'll get up to 16 full velocity or close. It drops off with each shot you fire, obviously, but uh, 16 shots out of it. So, you unscrew this. Just like the burner, you insert the cartridge with the nozzle down, and then you screw this closed. Now, You'll notice on this, there is actually an indentation for the cartridge. You, it does not puncture the cartridge just like this one um, until you actually press the trigger. So you go ahead and close it down. Once you get it closed, you use your little cotter pen that's on this. Now, and you could probably see why that could be a little bit annoying. It happens at the, you know, you wouldn't want to have to do that in the field. So you just snug it a little bit and you don't have to go too tight with it, just snug it. All right, at that point with the cartridge in, and with the mag loaded, you're ready to fire the weapon, and you do that exactly like you do with this one by pulling the trigger to charge it. Now, here's the trick. If you are on safety and you pull the trigger, it will charge the cartridge but not fire the round. If you leave it on fire and you just pull the trigger, it will fire the first round and puncture the cartridge at the same time. The problem is it will send it down range at half the velocity of the next round because obviously the charge won't be full. It's still pressurizing the chamber. Um, the best thing to do in that case, if you were to draw your weapon on safety, which it should be anyway, click the trigger, charge it, fire, and then fire the weapon. That way you're at full velocity. So here's what we're going to do. Just like last time, I'm going to reposition our camera here down that long corridor you saw. And we're going to try a few test rounds out of this. Now, in the next video, and I'm going to tell you guys, don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. Because the next video, we're putting these head to head. And we're actually going to go out and we're going to hit some stuff that matters. We're going to, we're going to shoot things that will truly show the impact. We're going to tr show the accuracy. We're going to show the range. We're going to show these things for what they really are and decide which one's best. And look at the pros and cons of both of them. So hang tight one second. I'm going to reposition and we'll be right back with you. All right, guys. So just like in the last shot, you guys remember, we're about 25 feet from the wall down there. And you remember, that's the exact same wall we were firing at last time. What I've done is I've set up three different boxes down there. I've set up one computer box. That's actually a power supply box with foam inside of it. Right next to it, we've got a, an empty box that used to have an Oculus in it. Now, that's real thick cardboard. And then right next to that, we've got a steel safe. Now, we've got five rounds that are loaded up in here. These are going to be the inert solid rounds. Then, we're going to fire the powder rounds because we want to see what the powder looks like. This is what we have to test. Once we get through this test, the next one will be the head-to-head, -head, which is coming up. And I've got some really interesting rounds for both of them for that one. So, here we go. So, with the weapon on safety... You pull the trigger to charge it, and now it's charged. Put it on fire, and we can aim. Let's aim at the right one first. Oh, the velocity on that. Let's do that again. Guys, this is no joke. You'll have to excuse my horrible aim, because they're accurate and I'm not today. This is insane. I think that's it for my rounds. Let's see. Yeah, we're out of rounds. 
So we're out of rounds, so let me go ahead. What we're going to do is I want to look at these rounds. I'm curious. They're inert and they are bouncing. I want to see if they're actually reusable or if they were damaged. So hold on one sec. All right, guys, so check this out. I went down here and I collected these rounds. They're in perfect condition, not a scratch on them. The boxes, on the other hand, are not. Now, we do want to test one more thing. Since they're solid, I have more solid ones on order. I got to shoot the safe. I, I, I have to shoot the safe and see what happens here. So here we go. We're going to load up these rounds. Now, it is still charged, guys. We're going to move it to fire. We're going to aim at the safe. How about that? That thing moves, guys. All right, so now let's look at the condition of those balls. We just hit steel. Hey, guys, I got to bring this up here and show it to you. That's a steel safe. I'd like you to look at the dent that that thing just left in there. Now, I don't care who you are. If that hits you, it's going to hurt, and they will stop coming at you. So let's go ahead, since we now know that this will obviously do damage, we're going to try something a little different. I got another one of those to show you in a second, guys. The box, it actually went through the entire box and out the backside. So we're going to look at that in a second. All right. We're going to now load in our green and white balls. These are the powder balls. So this is like kind of like a baby powder on the test rounds. Now, we have fired nine rounds through this on one eight ounce cartridge. All right, guys. So as a reminder, this is those rounds that are going to should put us up a nice cloud of powder. So let's see what this does. Now, when you see this, guys, just remember, this could be pepper spray hitting somebody. That's nasty. We are going to pepper spray anybody on this video, by the way. That'd be rude. Here we go. Look at that. There we go. Guys, this is unbelievably accurate. I mean, I, it's going right where and you can see the spray in there. In fact, what you can't see on this camera is there's a little cloud, a haze right in here. If you got hit anywhere with one of those things, it's going to cover you in that powder. There's just no way around it. So one other thing I want to show you. A couple of the shots that actually went through this. This is that solid cardboard box I told you about. Look at that powder. Look at that, guys. Through the box, through the box, through the box, out the back. This was nasty. And I mean, the oh my gosh, guys, look at the inside of this. It's totally covered in powder. You do not want to get hit by this bad boy. So, overall, now, we've already fired, uh, let's see, what is that, 15, 15 rounds total on this magazine, and it's still got the impact to knock these things down. Um, there's one more round. Looks like one of the solid ones. Let's put this back in here and go ahead and send it down range since, uh, since we're here anyway. <laughs> Guys, even the, the uh, powder balls are solid. I mean, they're going right through everything. Here we go. That's awesome, guys. Absolutely amazing. Amazing. So that much. Now, I'm just going to pull this trigger so we can continue to hear how much pressure is coming out. So that's 16 shots. So, listen to that. There you go. I counted, uh, let's see, 16, 17, 18, 18, I counted 21. 20, and, and it went from full power to dead instantly. So about 20 to 21 is what we're getting out of this thing so far. Awesome. Guys, I, look, you can't go wrong with either one of these. Let's be honest. At least at this point, until we put them head to head, they both perform amazing in the actual field and using them. Um, there are obviously going to be pros and cons. We're going to go over more of that when we go over the head to head against these things because I really, really, really want to see how they perform against each other in situations where it might actually be life-threatening, you know, where you actually need to protect yourself. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, that, okay, love this, that's stellar. I, I absolutely, that is, I, I could see people carrying that as a protection weapon. It's wonderful. This is Terminator. This is more like day-to-day -day save yourself. <laughs> so, um, now, as of con, once again, uh, I pulled out that cartridge. I got 17 shots out of it. Um, 
but to change that cartridge. If you're in the field and you need to change that quick, that's a problem because you actually have to unscrew that using that little Allen wrench. Whereas this one, you just pop the top, off it comes, pop another one in, you're done. So, but once again, we'll get into it with a head-to-head -head and we'll see if it really makes that much of a difference. They're both deadly accurate. Uh, they both throw up clouds of smoke, which is nasty. And uh, I wouldn't want to get hit by either one of them, frankly. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that bell because the next video uh, that I'll be shooting for these is going to be a head-to-head. -head. Uh, we'll probably do it outside because I want to shoot some objects that will actually react when they're hit. So keep an eye out for that when it's coming soon. Uh, also, for uh, uh, people of you guys that requested another Bake Up High and you guys know who you are and what it was, that one's coming pretty quick too. Have a fantastic week. Great start, right guys? Awesome. We'll see you this weekend. Be safe out there, guys. Bye-bye.